Okay. Yeah, so now it should work. Let's see. Okay, yes. Thanks, Matthew. Appreciate. And uh, yes, so um, let's start back. So um, I work at uh, the Sunglari Institute. Uh, I thank uh, collaborators that are uh, not mentioned elsewhere in the presentation. Um, this being Michael as a postdoc and uh, two former master students, Niklas and Kratika, with whom I'm still uh, working for other aspects uh, related to the QCD axiom. Uh, I want to mention about the TDLI in Shanghai because I've been asked a lot about uh, this new institute uh, during throughout the, this workshop. Uh, so this is a different place from the, I don't know how familiar you are with Shanghai, but it's a huge city and the university is in the south of the city, while uh, the Tsung Daoli Institute is where that heart to the west, uh, to the east side is. So it's quite far. Um, and we are at both, uh, we have to commute between both places. So it's rather new, as you see from the pictures, uh, and it was there, exact, it was released, ex um, I, I arrived exactly on the inauguration day, uh, two, two years ago. Now we have postdoc openings. This is very interesting, so take a screenshot or check later. Uh, and uh, they come with uh, some benefits, uh, um, including uh, settlement allowance uh, and uh, possibly even a startup fund, uh, along with um, uh, interesting salary. There will also be, so, so check, check this uh, or talk with me later about this. There will also be openings for faculty and postdocs uh, uh, on top of what uh, I just uh, mentioned, and this will be announced soon with deadlines in early November. Now, let's come to physics and uh, let's discuss first about inflation. So what well, we know that um, the problem uh, that inflation solves, um, one of the problems that inflation solves relates to the fact that if we look at different uh, points uh, uh, at the surface of uh, large uh, scattering, uh, Areas that are uh, causally disconnected have uh, similar uh, uh, statistical properties. This, in, uh, within the inflation model, can be understood uh, because these are uh, with these areas were all in causal contact uh, in the very early stages uh, of inflation, and then the universe. Uh, um, accelerated, this is the uh, inflation period, um, the expansion rate of the universe accelerated, bringing these uh, um, um, patches uh, away from each other so that they look, it looks like they are uh, causally disconnected at uh, the combination. On top of that, uh, inflation provides this explanation also for uh, the flatness and the monopole problems. Um, and also it could uh, be the cause for uh, uh, the seeding of uh, perturbations that later developed uh, into seeds for uh, galactic structures. So um, we know this through cosmic microwave background and uh, large scale structures. So, so we have a, uh, uh, so we have, uh, uh, I cannot move this, uh, this one, this uh, one. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, so we have a, um, a model of inflation which is uh, consistent with a uh, few characteristics that are rather simple, uh, adiabaticity, Gaussianity, and uh, a scale independence. So the, the, the CMB spectrum is consistent with a adiabatic power spectrum. Uh, and this means that uh, all of uh, inhomogeneity in every, um, in every species is uh, actually proportional to each other. So it can be determined by a single uh, fluctuation, uh, which is related to the primordial curvature uh, perturbation which is this uh, quantity R that will come across uh, throughout this presentation. We also have a power spectrum that is almost scale independent. This is a result of data. 
So the power spectrum is uh, the, the variance, is related to the variance of these, uh, um, of this prime order power spectrum and the um, spectral tilt. So the dependence on, uh, uh, on K, on the, on the wave uh, number is very mild. This is because uh, NS, the, the power spectrum, is close to one, not exactly one. And the fact that it's not exactly one is actually a hint or a, um, is actually uh, consistent with what inflation uh, expects. On top of that, we break uh, degeneracy through BAO. So this is a standard. So uh, along with uh, data from the CMB, we use uh, uh, large scale structures through um, a standard ruler. So an object of which we know the, the physical size in, uh, in, the, in the early universe and in the present universe. So that we are able to break the generacies that are otherwise present in the CMB uh, data set. So how does uh, inflation work? Um, we assume that we have uh, a period of inflation in which a field rolls slowly. So the evolution of this field uh, uh, evolves according to some uh, uh, flat potential, which is this potential V uh, that's regulated by two uh, slow roll parameters, epsilon and eta. Epsilon and eta are two small parameters during inflation that are related to the first and second derivative of the potential with respect to the field itself. Um, as long as you require, as long as these two, as long as these two, two uh, parameters are small, the, um, the Hubble rate is related to the height of the potential itself and not to its tilt, so not to the kinetic energy of the inflaton field. This assures an, um, an accelerated expansion rate, an approximately in, uh, constant uh, Hubble rate. This comes with a few problems though, in its uh, simplest explanation. One of them being the famous uh, eta problem. So if you look at uh, the expression for eta, where the second derivative of the potential appear. The second derivative of the potential is uh, related to the mass of the, the square of the mass of the inflaton. So um, one question when uh, you enter into model building is why is the inflaton field so light? Why isn't there anything that perturbs uh, such a structure? In more detail, any... Um, higher order, uh, for example, dimension six uh, operator I can introduce in my theory, would come with uh, a, um, a contribution to eta of order one. So it, it would, this would uh, end the inflation uh, immediately. So this would make difficult for a uh, model, uh, a successful model of inflation to be built. So uh, can we actually, forbid this correction by, uh, with, a, with a symmetry. This is where a uh, pseudo-scalar uh, boson comes uh, at hand. This is the idea uh, be behind the natural inflation. So um, if you protect the field with a non-perturbative uh, shift symmetry, which is the property of a pseudo-scalar uh, boson, we suppress corrections. Uh, so that we uh, allow for an, naturally for a hierarchy between the Hubble rate and the higher order scales. So this is the idea uh, of the paper in the 90s by Fries, Freeman, and Olinto. I also mentioned here a review uh, from uh, around 10 years ago. So with this um, uh, with this, um, pseudo-scalars, uh, uh, as we have uh, discussed uh, along this uh, workshop, uh, fall within uh, a vast range of uh, energies uh, that we have uh, discussed. 
uh, in, extensively. So we, we go from, from the dark energy. So notice that the, the numbers that I put here are in uh, GV. So 10 to the minus 14 GV. This is the QCD action, 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 5 electron volt. So um, pseudo scars or action like particles can be invoked for uh, modeling uh, uh, either dark energies or um, core of galaxies, uh, QCD action, uh, excess uh, disappeared, uh, but nevertheless, they can be sought um, in relation to axon electron coupling, uh, accelerators, uh, and uh, also um, as a models for uh, inflation field or inflaton. So, um, so there are the natural inflation itself is not uh, free from uh, troubles. One of them being the fact that uh, the potential needs to be extremely flat. So if you take the ratio between uh, the height and the field excursion, delta phi to the fourth, uh, this, uh, for consistency of a successful inflation model, require um, the, the self-coupling parameter to be extremely small. Although, uh, particle fee, if, if you attempt to build a, a model of, uh, of an inflation, of a natural inflation, uh, with a natural inflation particle, um, you expect this uh, ratio to be of order one. On top, of, okay. Um, so this is um, well. This is just a slide that I included here, so you can have some references on uh, on some models of uh, natural inflation that have been uh, implemented, uh, including uh, uh, supersymmetry and extra dimension throughout the literature. Okay, so. Um, on top of that, we have other issues with uh, natural inflation. Um, one fact being that the, the axon energy scale, value of F that appears in the, in the simplest model of natural inflation, appears to be transplankian. Uh, this is related to the first slow row parameter, epsilon. Epsilon uh, is uh, basically the ratio of V prime over V. So this is uh, one over the field excursion, delta phi. And the field excursion uh, during uh, inflation is of order F. So that uh, if you want, so, so this, this is the simplest explanation for why uh, the F, uh, the, 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 the axon energy scale, is so large in natural inflation because epsilon uh, is demanded to be smaller than one in order to for for uh, inflation to occur to for slow roll to occur. So and, and this is uh, hard to realize in string theory. You don't fall into this uh, landscape. And there are seminars that discuss this uh, issue. So I'll just mention this briefly. On top of that, uh, uh, data disfavor uh, um, uh, uh, a cosine potential, a simple cosine potential. So th this is the, the this is called the loop plot. So we have uh, the tensor to scalar ratio R. So this is uh, the amount of uh, tensor modes that we expect uh, from. Uh, the theory in, in, uh, uh, as a function of the, the, the spectral tilt and S. So uh, why is it called the zoo plot? Because um, many different uh, models uh, of, uh, of inflation can be all fit into the same, uh, into the same plot, giving different uh, predictions. On, um, and, and this is where uh, data are, can also come at hand. So, uh, the one sigma uh, constraint that comes from uh, uh, Planck uh, plus uh, BAO and uh, uh, BK, this is um, a bicep. Um, well, first of all, they favor uh, N, which is uh, uh, 
different from one by various order of magnitude, but by various uh, sigma, sorry. Uh, relatively small tensor to scalar ratio, which is not fit by uh, natural inflation models, which are these, uh, uh, which is this stripe here. The uh, spans uh, between uh, these two dots, which are given for uh, two different values of uh, the number of e-folds. So how long does uh, inflation, inflation last uh, before? Um, so this is um, the number of e-folds uh, before the end of inflation, uh, which is what we can uh, observe in the CMB. And it, it's what uh, is required to have uh, the desired amount of flatness. So this is why this is why usually this um, value is taken approximately sixty. But you see that uh, this uh, stripe is in uh, uh, yeah, does not fall within the the prediction. Uh, the, 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 sorry, the, the results from uh, uh, from the data. While other models are more. Uh, um, uh, uh, fall, fall more naturally into a lower value of the tensor to scalar ratio, such as a uh, uh, hilltop model here, um, or uh, Starobinsky inflation. So this is a known problem uh, that has been uh, worked for around 20 years now. Uh, so th th there are solutions to this. One solution being, for example, Alignment. If I take uh, two axion fields, each of which have a transplankian uh, F, transplankian values of the uh, energy scales, you can build uh, a flat direction, so a combination, a linear combination of these two fields, so that um, along this direction, uh, inflation uh, develops. Uh, you can uh, uh, describe the flatness uh, of this uh, so this, this is the this is the um, so-called kim nils peloso model and it's uh, rather famous uh, uh, you can uh, uh, parameterize the degree of flatness by uh, a combination of these parameters uh, in particular this figure is for alpha equal to zero so there is a massless uh, particle uh, that would uh, inflate uh, forever. So another possibility is that the inflaton field is coupled to bosons and fermion fields, in particular to gauge bosons, which uh, provide the, the, the strongest uh, coupling. So uh, if you include uh, the coupling to um, uh, other fields, in the equation of motion, you find uh, a friction term, which um, in the literature uh, is known as um, warm inflation. So that this is a warm natural inflation when it's uh, applied to the uh, pseudoscalar boson. So such a friction term uh, combines with the, the Hubble friction term in the equation of motion. Uh, this is an idea that, that of warm inflation has been uh, brought forth around 30 years ago by Berrera and uh, by his collaborators uh, later on. So um, uh, the difference with, called, uh, with what is called in this uh, business called inflation, which is the standard uh, inflation mechanism, is that on top of uh, the 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 quantum fluctuation of the inflaton field. You also have a reheating, uh, so a, a decay of the inflaton during inflation that comes along with thermal fluctuations. Um, this leads to a relaxation of the requirement for the slow roll. So um, you can allow for uh, your slow roll to exceed one if. Um, the dissipation rate of the inflaton into gauge boson or lighter fields 
exceeds the Hubble rate. And this is controlled by the ratio of the two, um, the, the ratio between the dissipation rate and the Hubble rate. So, um, for example, that, so there have been models that have been built for this. Uh, one of them uh, being this model by Guy Moore uh, predicts uh, a, a, a dissipation rate of um, is proportional to T cube, and this related to the uh, Spalaron mechanism. Another a problem that's uh, within uh, uh, warm inflation is that the naively the, the inflaton mass would not be protected against the thermal correction. So delta M phi co uh, correction to the inflaton field mass would be proportional to the temperature itself. For that, there are models that can be built. Uh, the, um, adjust this. So here I, I've uh, started two examples uh, of these such models have been uh, worked out recently. One uh, um, uh, refers to a previous model, which is called waterfall potential or hybrid inflation by Linde. So it, 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 um, it employs, uh, a, a, along with the inflaton, a uh, so-called water field, water, waterfall uh, field. Um, that uh, assist inflation. Um, another one is a warm little inflation model that uh, also uh, deals with uh, two fields. And the inflaton is the relative phase between these two fields. So all of these uh, um, uh, field theoretical uh, constructions uh, are made so that the, the, the inflaton potential does not depend on, uh, on uh, uh, sorry, the, the thermal potential does not depend on the inflaton field. So um, now let's come to building the, the, the power spectrum. Uh, for this, we have to work out uh, the equation of motion for the perturbations, which along with uh, quantum fluctuations, which are uh, here in purple. So this uh, zeta, um, is a uh, encodes uh, the, the uh, quantum noise that um, is um, peculiar to uh, the inflation field. Along with that, we have a thermal fluctuation that could uh, prevail over quantum fluctuation. So, if you now um, uh, construct solve this. Um, equation of motion, and then uh, you have uh, n different realizations for this, uh, for, for this uh, scheme, uh, depending so, so that you can, you can uh, track the, the statistical uh, uh, distribution of, uh, of, your, um, of your field. And from that, you, you, bu you, you build the, um, uh, the, the, the power spectrum. And you can reconstruct the, the spectral tilt and the tensor to scalar ratio in the, in the theory. This is what uh, um, I've, I've been done in the last year with uh, um, Gabriele Montefalcone and Vikas Aragam. They are two PhD students of Catherine Fries. So all three of them are uh, um, in Texas at uh, Austin. Uh, so we have. Uh, uh, looked at this model, we have uh, uh, constructed uh, uh, the, the through this method the, the power spectrum in different uh, um, for different uh, inflation potential, and soon we will uh, release uh, uh, GitHub hub code that I will uh, just mention uh, briefly. Let me just uh, fix the notation. So um, Q here is the ratio between uh, the dissipation rate and the Hubble rate, three times the Hubble rate. So we are interested in uh, how the, um, the power spectrum 
is modified by the presence of this thermal fluctuation. And this is encoded by this function G of Q. You see here that uh, uh, for values of Q, so values of the dissipation rate are much smaller than one, G is one. So there is no correction to, um, to, to, the, to the power spectrum. Then uh, depending on uh, how the, uh, the dissipation rate uh, um, depends on temperature, so in this case, we have uh, C equal to three and C equal to minus one, which are two different uh, uh, models that can be constructed. One of them being uh, this uh, Svaleron mode that I mentioned, which is TQ. Uh, depending on this uh, value of the parameter C, uh, we can either have a, a enhancement or a suppression in the power spectrum. For larger values of Q. So all of these uh, dots are uh, uh, numerical computations, and uh, we also present the, the fit for uh, for these results. So in the in the code, we employ different uh, potentials: monomial, hilltop, uh, natural inflation, uh, and other more uh, contrived model. Um, we also so we saw we have a suite to solve for the background perturbations and for the power spectrum. So um, the power spectrum would then be could possibly be amplified depending on uh, on the model that you. Uh, that you code up by the presence of friction. Uh, so this could uh, lead to um, interesting phenomenology, which uh, we or other people have not yet uh, studied, but it could be tied, for example, to primordial black hole formation. So the... Um, well, okay. Um, the, the power spectrum is fixed for 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 for, uh, for inflation. The this height of the power spectrum is fixed by uh, by what you see in the CMB. So well, this um, Q, oh, Q no no this Q is the ratio between uh, um, the dissipation rate and the Hubble rate. It's, a, it's the parameter of the theory basically. How, how how important this uh, um, inflation, um, this dissipation rate is in, in, during inflation. So, okay, we here we have a, a, the same uh, zoo plot, but R is in a logarithmic scale. So you, uh, you, you can see easier what's the value of R that is achieved. So in, in this way, so introducing Q, introducing a dissipation rate, ameliorates or makes uh, natural inflation uh, reconciling uh, with, uh, with data. Although um, ideally, the lower you go in R, uh, the more your theory is hidden uh, by future uh, observations. Um, lowering the tensor to scalar ratio also requires higher values of uh, this uh, dissipation rate of, of this uh, value of Q. So this would um, um, this would make uh, the, the theory more uh, le less and less um, palatable, let's say. So stay tuned. We will uh, release the code uh, hopefully. <laughs> within the month. Now let's uh, come to reheating. Uh, how does, so let's say that uh, we have uh, a milder version. So uh, the dissipation rate is not so important to, um, to affect the infl inflation uh, stage uh, appreciably, but it comes out 
uh, as an important uh, player throughout the reheating because the inflation, the inflaton field has to disappear. It has to decay into uh, mediator fields that then decay into standard model particles. Uh, now, the role of the Higgs field, uh, the Higgs field is also present uh, throughout this uh, story. So if you uh, consider the inflation, the, 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 the Higgs field during inflation, um, you can think of it as a, initially a classical field that rolls down its uh, quartic potential, but then it also receives quantum kicks at the bottom of the potential, which, uh, because this is what happens uh, uh, for any um, massless field that uh, assists inflation. So because of these uh, quantum kicks, um, different patches in which the Hubble, uh, the, in which the Higgs field uh, live within uh, the, uh, a larger Hubble patch uh, are initially causally connected um, as the Higgs field goes uh, super horizon get uh, um, to, to, to live in, in different uh, vacua. So during inflation, the um, horizon shrink and the modes uh, get uh, super, super horizon. In particular, the Higgs field uh, uh, exit this causal contact. So how does this, uh, how can this be reconciled? with uh, inflation and with reheating. So here we come back to this previous uh, cartoon by Bauman. And this is what I mean. Uh, if I look at uh, uh, the CMB, um, I expect different patches to have different values of the, of the Higgs field um, or of any other uh, massless field, but for the Higgs field, uh, this is what I am interested in. With a distribution that is described by um, the, the Higgs field over the Hubble rate to the fourth expo exponentiated. So, this block is shown so often, I see Don to point out. It is extrapolating the light flow back to the initial singularity, which is an act of case. We don't actually know how to calculate the propagation of light down back to the initial singularity, which is assuming standard Kitman lower. Oh, so, so the whole story is based on the assumption that we can define a net case and an unrealistic Okay, okay. So, okay, but if I remove this stripe, yeah. would you? Would... So the point is that you can't then argue that two points are necessarily causing the stripe because you don't know how light propagated through your field. Light might go to the you know, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. True, so, true, true. So I think uh, when you okay. to the union, uh, the goes more than yes. the of the city, then you can Okay. But the similarity is to your field. You have to yes. see the to your field, or you can't argue that the past life the so, so okay. Um, let's say that, okay. We assume FRW up to sixty fold before the infl before inflation, and that's it. And then, but then we are completely okay. And next time, I I will remove this uh, stripe here, and I will I will mention this. But no, it, it, I know that you have worked uh, a lot on this, so it, it's a fair comment. Uh, on on how to break this, uh, I mean.
Mm. Okay, okay. I'll I'll add this then. Okay. No, you're right. We shouldn't be too. We should state what uh, the assumptions are. Uh, well, but the, the the metric I gave the metric in in the very beginning. It's a FRW uh, with so plus. Basically, integrating T T over A of T. A of T yes. has to be put as T to the sum number which is less than one for the integral to convert. Then you have a random problem. If the integral does not convert, then you can't you can't say there is a random problem. The truth is, we don't know how A of T behaves. But we go back to the real time. The actual phase. Right. I. I I will think of, I will modify the slides and think about this more. But I, I agree generally. I agree. Okay, so now, um, uh, okay, we have talked about the inflation. Now let's uh, focus on the reheating stage. Uh, for the reheating stage, we have to have our inflaton to decay. Again, we have uh, some uh, decay rate, gamma. And uh, so, uh, assumed, for example, that your uh, inflaton field decays into uh, massive fermions with a mass F, the decay width is uh, given by some uh, 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 constant value uh, times a phase space uh, distribution. Uh, and uh, well, you want your byproducts to be lighter than. The inflaton itself. So this is again Higgs blocking. Uh, this is with my colleagues in uh, Stockholm. Again, um, supervised by Catherine Fraser, which is also a professor in Stockholm University, and Aliki Litza. Uh, she is about to finish her PhD uh, at Stockholm University. Patrick Stengel and Evangelos are to postdoc. Patrick actually just finished. A postdoc in Ferrara and was previously in uh, uh, Sisa. So, while well, Evangelos is in Barcelona. Uh, okay, so now let's look at this uh, decay width. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a modulation that is given by the phase space uh, distribution. We also have what, what we call Higgs blocking, and this is, uh, will be uh, defined soon. So this is what we assume, that the inflaton decays into two fermions. Now, since the uh, Higgs field uh, has its own dynamics uh, during inflation, and um, the Higgs field uh, uh, potential is a quartic potential. So in, for a quartic potential, the energy density uh, dilutes as a radiation field. So, uh, but, but this um, happens uh, a few e-folds uh, after inflation. So this uh, N here is the number of e-folds after the end of inflation, when uh, the Higgs field uh, has uh, this, this dynamics. Uh, uh, so um, if uh, you are at some patch, in the if if uh, your inflaton field uh, dissipates into some patch in which the Higgs uh, uh, provides a mass to this uh, Higgs fermion, which is larger than, than the inflaton mass, so which occurs for this uh, region of the parameter space with where Y is some Yukawa coupling, uh, the inflaton field has to wait for the Higgs field to relax in order to start decaying. So here we have the, the, um, the behavior of the, of the Higgs field um, during the heating. So in, in this stage, uh, epsilon is no longer smaller than one. Epsilon, the slower parameter, got to be of order one. The inflaton field, is no longer slow rolling. It has started to 
um, coherently oscillate around the minimum of this, its potential. So it, it's now a massive field which uh, decays potentially into these fermions. Um, but uh, the fact that the Higgs field uh, is, is has been driven during inflation uh, to have a, a, a value of the of its uh, web that prevents the inflaton from decaying actually leads to some values of um, uh, efaults after inflation that delay the the reheating stage. So you see that as, as soon as the Higgs field has decayed below this uh, threshold value, the, the value of the decayed width actually over, over, its, um, over this um, gamma zero normalization uh, jumps to one. And this is uh, because of the, the phase space distribution. You can track the distribution of the Higgs field uh, across different patches. So you solve uh, for, uh, for different uh, values of the, of the Higgs field uh, um, for different initial conditions. Uh, so that you can, uh, you can see how the distribution of the, of the Higgs um, field develops uh, as uh, reheating, of course. So this, again, these are number of efaults uh, after inflation. Uh, the wiggles here are due to the fact that uh, the Higgs field oscillates. Um, and notice also that uh, the x-axis uh, uh, shrink. And this is because the Higgs field is relaxing. So um, the extent of the distribution uh, shrink itself. So this is what uh, we, uh, this is a, one of the results. Uh, and I will mention how non-Gaussianity affect this as well. Uh, actually, this is a sort of uh, italic plot, uh, but I, I, I did not choose the colors. Uh, this is from uh, um, soon to be Dr. Uh, Litza. So um, this, is, this is the distribution of temperature fluctuations, which are related to the Bardeen parameter zeta. Uh, so the important parts here are, uh, we have different uh, self-coupling of the Higgs field, different values of this normalization gamma over the uh, inflaton mass, and different values of the Yukawa coupling in logarithmic uh, scale. If you now select, uh, for example, lambda, the self-coupling to be 10 to the minus two, uh, this, is the, this panel here is uh, uh, the, the, the result specifically to this slice. So uh, basically red stays for uh, um, values of delta T over T that are not consistent with uh, CMB data because temperature fluctuations uh, lie below 10 to the minus five. Uh, the white stripe is 10 to the minus, uh, temperature fluctuation equal to 10 to the minus five uh, or below, this is the green uh, area. Why is this area, some, some fraction of this area dashed? This is because um, in this uh, region of the parameter space, uh, the precision would be below 1%, which is what the, the, the precision at which we know data currently. So we cannot probe this uh, region here. So basically with the current instrument, uh, the, the, the undashed green area is what we can uh, probe. Now, let's see how uh, non-Gaussianity affects this, uh, this result. Okay, um, so, Again, we have the distribution of primordial curvature perturbations, and uh, we mentioned that the variance of this uh, distribution is related to the power spectrum. 
But what happens if I have uh, some additional contribution to this Gaussian? They would this 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 uh, this contribution would uh, appear as a uh, non Gaussianity in uh, uh, in 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 the in the in the CMB. So let's define a partition function in this way. So this is the, the is a, a partition function that depends on uh, the uh, distribution uh, of R and on some uh, uh, moment, moments J. Now I can uh, I can define correlators between uh, different uh, points in the CMB so that uh, if I have uh, three and four point correlations, uh, I, I can uh, uh, relate this to uh, different moments in the, in the distribution. In particular, uh, we refer to the parameterization for the bispectrum through this uh, FNL parameter parameterizes the, the quadratic uh, correction to um, the distributions that I mentioned before. Um, in, in, our, in our model we use, in our computation, we actually use FNL uh, given by the, the skewness of the distribution over uh, the Bardeen parameter fourth, which is found by the prescription by Zali et al. So we employ a patch by patch method in which starting from uh, different uh, randomly drawn uh, uh, initial condition for the Hubble, uh, for, the, for the Higgs uh, field uh, at the end of inflation, drawn from uh, the uh, a distribution according to this uh, Yokohama, Yokohama distribution. We then uh, evolve the equation of motions uh, during uh, reheating for um, uh, inflaton, radiation, and Higgs. And then we directly find the distribution of uh, densities uh, uh, at any number n of e folds after inflation. So we can track uh, how these uh, uh, fields are distributed. So and then, and then we can employ the Dvali et al. Uh, um, approach to, to find the, the value of FNL, which is bound uh, tightly by observation. So anything that uh, to the right of this uh, plot is uh, already uh, been uh, excluded. Uh, remember, this is a slice uh, uh, for uh, some value of uh, y of of, of the um, Higgs uh, self coupling, um, but this can be employed uh, for um, um, by by keeping y as a, as a parameter itself. So basically, we can still probe this uh, tiny strip between uh, uh, these two regions of the parameters. Now. Last part in the last five minutes, uh, which is uh, yes, yes, exactly. Because uh, sorry, um, oh, as a curvature, y yes, uh, yes, we didn't. We didn't study those, oh. but yeah, there would be, yes. There would be also. There would be? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, the, the, there would be isocurvature associated with uh, the distribution of the Higgs uh, field itself. Hmm. Say, si similar to the axiom field, basically. Like the fact that you have a distribution of uh, Higgs. Yeah, so, but then I'm worried that you are excluded because. Um, <laughs> the point is that uh, um, these isocurvature modes are uh, like since since you have a dynamics for the Higgs field, these are uh, converted uh, uh, throughout uh, uh, the heating stage. 
Yes. This is why we, I mean, they're not propagated. Uh, so this is why we we, are, we, we didn't check for them. Uh -huh. But um, we can have a second look uh, if you want Sorry. to discuss about this. Oh, we can discuss later, okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. So boson stars in the last five minutes, I just want to mention briefly one uh, one part. So there is already a talk uh, in, in this uh, uh, series that specifically goes through boson stars. So let's consider, uh, so this is a different topic, but um, I'd like to bring it up. So now let's move to a system of N bosons which are confined within a region of size r and they have a total mass so if i have n uh, big n boson each of mass mu if i don't uh, include uh, self-interaction the total mass is the product of the two now the kinetic energy of uh, such a system of the boson inside such a system is uh, given by this formula here it's proportional to one over r square this is because of uh, uh, Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Like, uh, I have confined a particle within some uh, region of uh, size r. Um, I also have a self uh, uh, gravitational energy, so I can and I can understand the total energy of this system as the sum of these two kinetic and potential terms. Now, if I minimize the total energy, so I find the the uh, the minimum, the the so I, I find the radius of the of the object uh, by minimizing the energy with respect to uh, the parameter of the theory. I find the radius of the boson star, uh, where this a is a parameter that has to be fit numerically. This was done in '69 by Ruffini and Bonazzola first. Um, and you also have uh, uh, the mass uh, and the mass of the boson square at the denominator. Now, if I demand that my boson star is larger than the corresponding black hole of the same mass, this leads to some uh, upper limit for the mass of the boson star I can uh, place, which is inversely proportional to the boson mass. Uh, so this is a general. These are general features that you would expect for for uh, any boson star. Now let's come more uh, general, more more in particular. Sorry, from the general. Um, complex scalar field. We have such a uh, conserved symmet uh, so, such a conserved number of. Uh, uh, bosons that comes from the U1 symmetry that associated with them. So we have a conserved current and a conserved number. This has been studied extensively in the literature. The examples are called the mini boson stars. If the uh, potential of the uh, of the complex scalar field is a quadratic potential or a massive boson star if there is an additional quartic self-interaction. For an axion field, uh, you don't have a U1 symmetry, but you can uh, approximately um, recover a conservation in the non relativistic, a conservation um, relation in the non relativistic limit. So, uh, in the non relativistic limit, uh, we recover the Schrodinger Poisson equation. So, from the action, you from the action that I showed uh, earlier for, for a scalar field, you write down the Klein Gordon equation, you write down the Einstein equation. These two equations in the non relativistic limit correspond to the Schrodinger equation for uh, uh, my system of uh, axions and to uh, the Poisson equation for, uh, for the same uh, self gravitating um, system where psi is the axon wave function and phi is the gravitational field here. This can be solved by shooting method, last two slides. Uh, by shooting method, which means that um, I remove the time uh, oscillations 
which uh, with um, so that the the oscillation uh, frequency here is related to the initial condition at the core. So I have one parameter now that regulates how the profile of my boson star or my axion star looks like. And I want to find the only solution, so the only value of omega that um, is consistent with all of the boundary condition. This is, so, this is called the shooting method. I choose different values of the initial condition at one point and I uh, impose a boundary condition somewhere else, for example, at infinity. Once I find the, the, solu the, the only solution that uh, uh, is smooth, so it goes to zero at infinity, uh, I can then uh, compute the mass of the boson star by uh, computing the energy density uh, underneath this uh, curve. And also the radius, for example, by saying I want 90% of the mass to be within uh, the radius that I'm of interest. This, uh, so this is what I, I have done uh, in, in 2017 for the axion. This is the result with Sebastian Baum, Javier Redondo, the Wolfsier, Catherine Fries, and Frank Witch. So uh, building up uh, the radius given uh, in, in the, found through the method that I just discussed, radius uh, that co contains 90% of the mass. As a function of the mass, uh, for different values of F of the axion, this is QCD axion energy scale, uh, we find that uh, these uh, lines, so the um, uh, lines with negative tilt, describe the type of boson stars that I mentioned earlier. These are boson stars that are supported by gravity. So if I perturb this uh, system, this is a stable configuration. Um, if um, uh, this is because, um, mm, well, this is because gra gravity stabilizes uh, this system, but then uh, I come to some uh, tipping point at which self interaction, so this is different from uh, the Taub mass limit that I mentioned earlier. This is this limit here, this uh, turning point here is because of the self interaction in the axion that become important, more important than gravity, because for the axion, the self interaction is also attractive. And then I am drawn into this uh, unstable region in which the, the equilibrium would be driven by. Uh, comp competition between uh, self-interaction and uh, Heisenberg uh, or quantum pressure. Uh, these are unstable solutions. So, oh, sorry. So basically you expect axion stars only to live on this uh, first branch. And this is the so-called dilute branch. So these are the conclusions. Uh, um, uh, so axion like pseudo scars uh, may have played uh, an important role already in the very early stages of the universe. And uh, uh, well, uh, both the inflation stage and the reheating stage can uh, tell us about uh, model building. Uh, um, thanks. Thank you very much for this very interesting talk. Uh, are there questions? Hmm. Thank you, very interesting. Um, can I see the mass radius relation again? Yeah, so this seems slightly counterintuitive. If the decay constant is larger, so the couplings are smaller, the radius of the star is also smaller? Uh, it seems contrary yes. to my expectations. I uh -huh. would think if the coupling was was bigger, it would be more tightly bound. I see. Um, 
Okay, maybe five years ago I could have answered more quickly. Let me think. So larger f means smaller m. Oh, so this is this is specifically for like QCD. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. 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 Um, smaller m means that uh, hmm, the same mass can be acquired if you have a larger number of bosons. Mm -hmm. For that. Um, Ah, wait, wait, just a second. Um, this is a rescale radius and the rescale mass. So this is not the mass and the radius. This, these are in units of the mass of the QC axon and the F square over M, because you can write down the Schrodinger Poisson equation then in dimensionless uh, units with this. So it's more complicated than this. Um, Like for example, the mass scales with f yeah. uh, cube. So larger f uh, actually leads to larger values of the mass because I mean th this this picture use dimensionless units here. You have to rescale by f cube, basically f cube over uh, lambda square. Uh, so that, uh, uh, well, no, it should, so that basically this is, this goes down by four orders of magnitude. So this tipping point would be 12 orders of magnitude. Instead of 10 to the five would be 10 to the 19, uh, 10 to the 17, I think. So 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 the, the the this in physical units would be for larger values of the mass Large. for the radius also one over m is f so um but then you have to multiply only by one power of f not three uh but yes so uh, it's not so so obvious. it's not no the conversion is not so okay, simple. okay. i think i understand Any more questions? If not, uh, we'll thank you for a bit. Okay. Uh, and maybe we come back at 11.40, is that okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh,